welcome to Paranormal Captivity. Tonight I'm going to be doing a tag video. Tyler from Real Paranormal UK got a hold of me and wanted to do a tag regarding tattoos and being a paranormal YouTuber, which is such a great combination in my opinion because one of the very first comments that I got that could be considered negative was somebody just being like, great, another tattooed ghost hunter. Which I didn't take in a negative way, but you could tell that they kind of meant it that way. And if you really think about it, a lot of people in this same field also have a love of body art, it seems like. Which is cool to me. Like, I, I have it. I like it. So, I just found it interesting that that's a stereotype that we can actually fall into as, uh, as people who are interested in this field. Most of these questions were his doing. I contributed a little bit. So it's kind of a collaboration and I'm just going to do this tag. It's actually called the Creepy and Inked Tag. So if you are also a part of this kind of stereotype, but not in a negative way, of being interested in the strange and unusual and the cults and paranormal, and you also happen to enjoy tattoos, tag, you're it. Do the tag, and then tag me in it because I really enjoy tattoos in general and I wanna see what you guys have too. Creepy and inked. First question, what was your first tattoo? I actually got two tattoos at the same time. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be awkward to show. I just realized this one's gonna be a little weird. Oh, is, is my body gonna allow this? Okay, <laughs> can you guys see? I have a little lizard like outline going on right there and his tail is like curly and it's like fallen off uh, multiple times where the ink just comes off. I've had that one touched up like twice, um, but it's kind of cool because lizards lose their tail. So I figure it's like me escaping some kind of danger each time I have to get it touched up. And then I also got this tattoo that's behind my ear, which is also very faded and needs touched up very badly of a butterfly. So I got both of those done at the same time. Technically they tattooed my ankle first and then this one, but they were both my first tattoos. Question two is a loaded question, guys. So I'm gonna do it in a brief synopsis. What is the meaning and or story behind this tattoo or all of your tattoos? Each one is very important to me. Butterflies, I have had a bit of an obsession with my entire life. In my last tag video, we kind of talked about spirit animals and that was either seeing a ghost of an animal, but I also took it in like a metaphysical, spiritual sense as well. All, all of my tattoos pretty much have a, a spiritual, metaphysical meaning behind them. Butterflies are also like a symbol and a sign of things going right and things going the way that they're supposed to, and I think that they're good luck. The lizard tattoo has a very important meaning to me. When I was little, both of my parents weren't really like typical church goers. They weren't super forceful of that. But I did grow up in a predominantly Christian family. We like prayed at, you know, get togethers and things like that. And I went to church because a lot of my friends went to church and boyfriends in high school and things like that. And I did get to go to a variety of churches. But I've never felt like church was where I felt the most connected to whatever else could be out there. Um, so I was sitting in church one day, I had to take my grandma, I was over 16 because I, I drove there, and I was sitting there and I was really not feeling it. <laughs> Basically, the church that she attended was the first church I'd had experience with, but I'd gone to other churches and, and they all had a more youth-driven group that I was a part of. Hers were all people her age, and I took her to church one day, and I was sitting there and they were all talking about their ailments and these negative things going on in their lives and sad things and I just I started daydreaming I, I heard them all talking and then I started thinking like this is not what this should be to me to me a, a place where you can feel connected spiritually to something isn't being around people talking about things that aren't good. It's it's feeling a connection that's so much deeper and so much more real than anything I've ever found inside of a building. And so as, I, as I'm thinking of this, I look to my right and at the edge of the pew there's these like stained glass windows and the glass is kind of cool because it's like frosted bubbly kind of glass and it's a mix between blue and purple. And I'm looking outside and I keep thinking, 
out there is where I feel more connected to this stuff. Just being in nature, being outside, I feel it so much more. And as I'm saying this in my head, I see a lizard jump onto the stained glass window. And it continued to walk around the stained glass window and keep me entertained the entire time that I was at that church service. And I just felt like that's, that's what this is to me. That's a connection that I can get behind. So that's also why, I don't know if you could tell because it's so far away from the camera, but that's why that tattoo is blue and purple lines. It's from the stained glass from where I saw the shadow of the lizard that, that gets me. Meaning behind bird. I have a bird here. And it's actually a cover-up. It's been tattooed before, but it was birds before. Birds to me are messengers of, again, like signs and getting things intuitively and spiritually. So I feel like whenever I receive something, it's like like a little bird just sits on my shoulder and I get an impression and I'm like, oh, and I follow my gut and my intuition a lot. So that means a lot to me. Plus birds are just sim symbolic of home and, and freedom and being able to see things from a different perspective. And then this bird itself is a lilac breasted roller. It's an African bird. And what it actually does is it waits on natural disasters like forest fires for creatures to be escaping the fire and that's when they will attack their prey. So in a way it's kind of like finding opportunity and inspiration and seizing the moment even when the moment doesn't seem like it's a good one. The moon phases I have here I got done because I've always felt a very strong connection to the moon. Like whenever I'm driving and I see the moon, I'll go, hi moon. And I just think moonlight's beautiful. I love nighttime. I love full moons. I feel very deeply connected to moon stuff. And if you are a guy and you're weird about girl stuff, plug your ears for a moment. But my cycle always matched up to the full moon. Like I've just been very connected. And so I felt like that was just a way of honoring me being a woman because it's a very uh, female symbol and I want it to be colorful because I feel like it's like a magical moon and it's got some blue in it too so it's kind of like once in a blue moon doesn't have to be just once it can be anytime like there's there's magic and opportunity in all moments it's not just like a, a one-time thing and then this flower which <laughs> when it's this direction let me stand up this is a lotus with like mandela jewelry kind of drippy prettiness. Um, I got that because I, I love the aesthetic of mandela style tattoos. I love the representation of a lotus because it very much too, like my bird, grows out of like muck and mire and it's, it's something beautiful out of something that traditionally is not really much to be seen. It's not really the greatest of situations. but something beautiful can still emerge from it. I got that one as a gift from Alex because being a theater director, I got to do something that meant a lot to me and traditionally with actors and other people who are involved in productions, you get flowers on the day of the show and he wanted to buy me a flower, but one that I could keep forever. Question three, if you had to choose one tattoo to get rid of, what would it be and why? And I guess that would probably be the one I already had covered up. Uh, before this was one bird portrait, it was five little silhouettes of birds and they were colorful. I, I got them because of the same reasons overall that I love birds and I feel like they bring messages. But I got them done in that silhouette style. A lot of people were like, oh, that's a tattoo? What is it? And I was like, if, if you can't tell what my tattoo is, I probably need to get it done better. <laughs> so. That one I did get rid of, and I did get it better. Number four, one, two, three, four. What tattoo has the most meaning to you and why? Probably the lizard, as I already explained. Question five, where on the body would you never get a tattoo? I really think um, face tattoos would probably not be my jam, although I have seen really cute ones that go like right in front of your ear, so I can't completely say that I wouldn't get one because technically it's part of your face and I have thought that that would be pretty. Um, I would also probably never get something on my stomach. Uh, I just, not for me. Uh, same with like lower back center tattoos, not for me. I very much like locations of tattoos, so I feel like 
if it was a location that I felt like the art would look nice, I would get it. But those locations, at least by themselves, not for me. Question six. Do you have any family or friends with tattoos, and what do they think of them? I think most of my friends have tattoos. I'm really coming up short trying to think of any that don't. And then, like, some of my family doesn't have tattoos, but they're cool with them. Like my cousin Sammy. She's awesome. She wants to get tattoos. She just hasn't yet, but she really likes tattoos. Um, and then there's some members of my family who don't get it. They're just, they're not into it, but they don't really ever talk negatively about them in any way. Like my dad, he's not really into tattoos. Neither is Alex's mom, but they both, I'll show them what I want. I'll be excited. I'll be like, I got a new tattoo. And they're like, cool. <laughs> it's, it's not anything negative for them at least. Question seven, do you have any tattoos planned for the future? I do, I have many that I've wanted for a very long time. I mentioned whenever I went through one of my um, memory box vlogs that there's a, a tree that I've drawn since I was little and I've always wanted a bony tree tattooed on me and now I know the tree that I want to have tattooed on me, which would be the tree Alex proposed to me in front of last Halloween. Um, and I think I know the location of it. I think I want to tie in some other themes of our relationship and kind of like the theme vibe that I want to go with for our wedding into that tattoo. And I think it's actually going to be my most visible and largest tattoo, um, as of now at least, but I have no idea exactly when I will be getting that done. I also want to get this shaded and I think I want to add some flowers around it. I want to get my butterfly redone, probably portrait style. Possibly the same with my lizard, or I might just fix his little tail and keep him simple. I, I like that too. I also, at some point, want to get like a kind of matching tattoo with Alex, but we don't know exactly what we want to get yet. We've talked about tons of different concepts over the years, so it's just a matter of picking something. Um, but I do sometimes kind of consider my moons to be a somewhat matching tattoo with him. He has an earth tattoo that's also the wrong colors, like I do, so it's kind of like the earth and the moon. They go together a little bit and they're both different than they actually are. But we want to get like an actual together tattoo at some point too. Question eight is a scenario question. You just lost a bet with a friend. And the result in losing means that you have to get a horror character tattooed somewhere on your body. What character would you choose and where would you put it? Personally, I don't feel like this is much of a punishment, but... I know, I know where you're going with this, Tyler. You're trying to add a little more of that creepy in, and I love that. I have thought about getting um, different horror characters because I do love the horror genre so much. I don't think I could choose just one. When I think about it, I would probably want a portrait of Elvira and Freddy Krueger, one on each top of my foot. I think that'd be so cool looking. But I also have such a soft spot for Beetlejuice. So that might happen too. I don't know. Either way, I don't really make bets because I'm not in the game of losing, so it'll never probably happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing some about my tattoos. I know it was a highly requested topic, and now I was able to do it in the form of a tag and a collaboration and something you guys can do too, so I hope you like that. Please do, if you make a video doing this tag, send me a link somewhere on social media so I can check it out and look at your tattoos. That weird clicking sound is my dog scratching his mouth with his foot. <laughs> Sorry. If you did not enjoy this video hearing about tattoos, you can always leave this a thumbs down that way and keep it in mind for future content. However, if you're also into tattoos and the paranormal, give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. I do upload very frequently and if somehow finding a tattoo video is your first time meeting me, I'm Kat. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Normally I just talk about creepy stuff on my channel, but sometimes I talk about this stuff too. Please leave a comment somewhere below. I read every single one. I try and interact with you guys as much as I can and I love reading your comments. I love you guys. Have a strange day. Bye!